Hello, 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 welcome to Jackal DIY and Tech. In today's video, I'll show you what you can use if you're just a hobbyist when it comes to electronics, like me. You can use something like All About Circuits. If you log in, you will have access to the forum. You can ask questions and people will most likely help you out by answering. Just don't expect that you'll get a solution handed to you on a silver platter. So what we can use to mitigate that and also so you don't have to wait a day two to get an answer is to use something like Flux AI. Now I'm already logged in and as you can see I have four projects used out of five and I'm using the free plan. So these are the four projects. So let me open this one, see if it's actually one that I use, otherwise I'll delete it. This is a circuit for a dummy battery that I've put together from multiple sources and I will make a separate video about this one once I put all of the components together. Why do I have such funky names? Well, when you make a new project and if you don't change the name, it just gives you a random silly name. So this is what we can use. It's a simple circuit with an LED and I will show you how to make it. Let's see this one. I actually don't know what this circuit is supposed to do. Let's see. I did ask a question to the AI. So can you give me a simple circuit in which the input voltage has resettable fuse followed by some load. Now this is the last project here in aid. If this circuit also works, I still have to build it. I will also show it. Though in this case, it's quite messed up because not all of the components that you may want to use are added inside Flux AI. And I don't use it that often to make my own components, which you can also do. So let's make a simple one, which was, I think this one. So let's go to new project. I will type in the name. So as you can see, the name that he chose, Medical Pros Warp Drive, doesn't tell me much. So what I'll just do is type in Hello World. If you come from a programming background, you will know what this does. Basically, if you program something, the first thing that you do is display Hello World. And what I thought an alternative is when it comes to electronics is to push a switch and turn on an LED, which is what you can also do inside Flux. But what you have to know is that you use components with simulation models. Not all of the components have simulation models. As you can see, this one isn't simulated. So if you want a simulation, you need to enable this icon. And now what we need first off is some kind of a voltage. So this is supply, click and drag. If you want to rotate this around, you can press the keys with the square brackets to go left and right. So I'll put it like that. Then we need some kind of an LED, maybe this one, rotate it around. You can then position it to have the same spacing. And let's see, in the LED, you have the simulation and controls. Now we don't have anything to simulate because we don't have anything connected yet. And the controls also, we don't have anything. Now this LED has some specifics, so forward voltage, 1.7 volts, the saturation current, and the series resistance values. Now let's go to the voltage. By default, this is set to 5 volts. Maybe we just want this to be 3 volts. And now the last thing that we need is some kind of a switch. Last time I've tried this, the switches did not work as expected. So maybe I will use a bunch of switches. I will use this push button. I will use this SPST switch. And I will see if I need any other switch. So first, let's just connect like so. Click on the switch. Now the switch does have the simulation. Cannot run because the circuit isn't fully connected. Well, it is fully connected, at least it should be. 
Anyway, when you click on the switch, you can go to controls and click on the I icon. So this gives you a button so you can open and close it. So I'll try this switch. I'll click on the line, press delete and connect it to the switch up top. Also click on the I icon. Otherwise you have to press close and open here. Connect these pins as we want. So, okay, let's delete this component. Click on the LED now. So everything is connected. I'll just delete the lines and make new connections. Now when it comes to simulation, it is a little buggy and I have no idea why. But now it works. As you can see, we see the voltage, the V drop, the V anode, cathode and the current. And if you want to see it besides the LED, simply enable the eye icon. Now the LED itself won't light up, but we should see a change in the voltage. And we do. So this is now turned on and this is now turned off. So will the same thing happen if I use the previous LED, which was this one. Flip it around, connect it in parallel, go to simulation. So I can also display these values. So we have exactly or almost the same values. So the two LEDs that I've used are pretty much the same as it should be. So this is how you can simulate circuits. As you can see, the flux.ai is still bugging. So if it bugs out because you made some changes, you'll have to refresh and hopefully that will fix the issues. In this case it does. Also what you may need to do is also use the ground and just connect it to the minus just to make double sure that everything is working as intended. And now as you can see the LEDs also light up. So that's cool. So as you can see the simulation is still a little buggy but at least it works on simple circuits like this one. Now what you can also do is right click, go to pilot, ask a question. This is an algorithm that will help you to make new components and maybe even make your own designs. Now it won't just put components where you have to put them. It will simply explain to you which components you need to use and how to connect them. Now is this the best thing that you can use? Probably not, but it's free and if you're just a hobbyist, that does something like this once a month, then it's definitely worth using, especially because you can ask questions and get almost, well, immediate responses. When it comes to using the Copilot, you are limited to 50 questions, I believe. At least if we take a look here, I have eight uses out of 50. And this supposedly resets each month. Now, if I go to this one, I also use the Copilot to make this circuit. So I asked the question and the co-pilot gave me one long answer. I asked the second question and got a second response. In this case, we don't have the chip MAX98306. I asked it how to make it. It took a while, so it connected to the internet to find the data sheet of it. And then it pretty much gave me the pinout and the instructions on how to make it. Now I didn't make it, but it also gave me all of the instructions how to connect it in the first question. Once I get all of the components for this circuit, I'll put it together and if it works, I will also make a video on how to make it yourself and what this is supposed to be is a cheap solution for a hearing aid, which should help old people with hearing loss. And for this hearing aid project, if I go down, it lists all of the components that I need and where I can buy it from. 
how much they cost and if they're available. And every now and then you'll also get an email reminding you that the components were available for the project that you have saved. Now, if you want to delete the project, you'll simply click on the three dots and delete the project. Now, this is how I use Flux AI as a hobbyist electronics, maybe once a month, and let me know what you use and how often you use it and what you make. And if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more DIY and tech content. And we'll do something else in the next video.